So I'm pretty positive that you are already familiar with e-commerce chatbots, more specifically those that live as widgets on e-commerce sites with which visitors can come in the website and then ask the chatbot about a variety of things, right? Including anything regarding the order that they have already placed, questions about a specific product and more. And you've probably seen a lot of them online already, but they're missing a very powerful feature. And this feature is a dynamic recommendation system. Most of the chatbots that you see on stores right now have a feature in place where you can click a few buttons and then the chatbot will recommend a list of products, right? In this case, it could be bestsellers, right? This is helpful because it's able to display those within the chat widget. But this method of trying to convert visitors to buyers might not be the best way to do it. And this is simply because all the products are going to be shown in the same way that are going to be shown to all of the visitors that talk to that chatbot, right? So the best way to do this is to add a system that enables the chatbot to get the query from the user, right? Understand what the user needs and then retrieve the specific item that they are asking for instead of just presenting the same products to every visitor. And that's what I will be talking about today. We will go through the dynamic recommendation system of a chatbot that I've built for one of my clients in the UK, which is a nutrition and fitness e-commerce store. And I'm pretty sure that the system that I'm about to show you today is one of the very few, and if not the only one that I've seen on YouTube that uses Google Sheets instead of Airtable, all right? So make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel in order to get more unique videos like these. And without further ado, let's get started with a little demo that I have prepared for you, and then we will go through the tutorial in order for you to understand how to do this, all right? Let's go. So you will run it, right? The customer will visit the website and the chatbot will pop up or you will activate it by chatting to it. And then it will tell you something like this, right? Welcome to the store. How may I assist you? And then you can choose, right? I'm only going to show you the product recommendation on this one. So yeah, we're going to click here and then it's going to take us to um, the intent, right? The, the relevant intent. Now we need to choose between one of these three options. Okay, let's go to bestsellers. And this is what I was talking to you about before, right? Let's go to vitamins and we're presented with a static set of products, okay? These products will be typically a set of products that the e-commerce owner wants to sell, okay? They're very interested in selling. And this is fine, right? If another season comes by and, you know, you want to change these, you will have to do this manually. You'll have to change the image, the title, the price, and so on and so on, which is fine, right? You always should have a bestsellers section. But what if I want something specific? right? I want to look for a product that matches my nutrition goal. Well, in this case, I will go to, I want something specific. So let's say I'm new to the fitness and nutrition space and I'm looking for something to help me grow muscle. Okay. Because I just recently started going to the gym. Okay. So let's type that here. I want something to help me bulk up. All right. So the chatbot is going to get a query and it's going to search on a Google sheet for the most relevant products based on the query that I added okay so it shows me three products that are relevant to my query and it says the following for bulking up i will recommend impact weight protein powder and isolate powder as they are both high in protein and can support muscle growth and recovery right so the message is customized and, and yeah and you can even click the links to the products okay and you can add them to cart buy buy them straight away and whatever you want. So you can definitely see that by adding the products, right? By adding the products and adding a link to shop the product, it reduces the barrier between the user looking for the right thing, right? The user could just search through a whole website by themselves and you know, that adds a lot of friction. So by having a system like this in place inside the chatbot, it reduces that friction, right? It gets to where the user wants to be, AKA buying that product as quick as possible, right? And this will increase conversion rates. But now, I am going to type something that does not make any sense, okay? Just to test it out. All right, so I'm gonna put cars, <laughs> all right? It's going to tell me that it doesn't understand that, okay? And I can just go back to, you know, the best sellers and so on, or I can just repeat the query and put in something that makes sense again, okay? So I'm going to type, I want something for brain performance an example like that and it's going to show me a couple products that will help me with brain performance okay great okay let's say i'm not interested anymore and it takes me back okay and, and i can either go back to the best sellers ask again about a specific product that i want or go back to the main menu all right great so hopefully you were able to understand the value of having a dynamic recommendation system like the one i've shown you inside your chatbot in order to increase the number of 
conversions on your e-commerce site. And now let's go through how I've built this using Google Sheets and VoiceFlow. All right, let's go. All right, so let's go through this dynamic system. All right, by the way, I will leave this as a template for you to download and play around with. So just go down on the description and I will leave a link there for you to access the template. All right, so it all starts on this first block where we will ask the user, what do they want, right? What are they looking for? And we will store it in this variable right here. Then that variable will be passed onto this block where we will instruct a language model to convert that user query into one of these three product types, okay? So we're going to standardize that query, okay? Based on what the query mentions, we're going to tell to the language model, all right, does he want either vitamin, protein, or amino acids? And therefore, choose one of these three words. And then we add a couple more things so that the output becomes a bit more consistent and we also reduce the temperature, right? If you increase the temperature of this, you will allow the language model to respond in a more creative way. So it's good to drop the temperature when you want a consistent output, all right? So after we get one of those three uh, product types, we're going to make an API call and we're going to use this URL, all right? And we're going to use the following parameters on the API call. You leave this as it is. And then where do you get this? You will have a Google Sheet with all the data regarding your products on Shopify, okay? Or it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be Shopify. But in this case, what I've done is that I have my Shopify right here, okay? I made, I made a dummy one for this um, tutorial. But what you will do if you have a Shopify store, is to export it and you select CSV, okay? CSV, CSV for Excel numbers and other spreadsheet programs. So you're able to interpret it on Google Sheets, okay? All right, so once you have all the products in this sheet, what you're going to do in order to get this is that you will go here and you will get this long string in between these two forward slashes, okay? Get all that and then you paste it back on here, all right? And one other thing is that you see here that it says edit. Well, that means that you also have to go here onto permissions and allow anyone with the link to access, okay? Because if you don't do this, you will not be able to access the information on the sheet via the API call, okay? You can leave it in viewer, that's fine. You don't need to put it as editor. With viewer, it's fine. And yeah, that's it. So that's that's done. And then you leave that as sheet. And then here, you will put the name of the sheet where you have the information in, okay? It, it, remember, it's case sensitive. So make sure you put it exactly as it appears here. All right, and then we're going to capture the response and we are going to assign it to this variable here, okay? Let's see how this request looks like, right? Okay, so what you see here is a really big array, as you can see, okay? This array contains two big pieces of information, okay? So the first one, which goes all the way down until around here, all this is the data that we collected from the Google Sheets stored in column format, okay? So if you have a look, a closer look, and you see the order in which this data is presented, you will see that it's being read as columns, right? Being read like this. So it's in column form. Well, you can clearly see by the label here, okay? And if you scroll a bit down, you'll see another big piece of information, okay? All this, this is the same information but it's being stored in row format, right? So it's being displayed, it's being stored in the following order, all right? And this row formatted data is the data that we will be extracting, filtering, and then assigning to variables so that we're able to show it in a carousel, right? So when the user asks a query, then what they get is a nice carousel with images, prices, and descriptions, and so on, all right? In order to help with the product recommendation, as I explained before. All right, so now let's leave this block and let's go to the next block, which is a JavaScript block okay here i have written some custom code like i have mentioned before and first of all what i'm going to do is that i'm going to write a function to remove html okay because over here if you expand this i have some html that is really just a bit annoying right and i just want to extract the text that is coherent right because a person might be reading this and then we have the following function which is the most important which iterates through each row okay so it's going to go through each row and then it's going to detect if the product type matches with the query that the user inputted, right? So the user is going to ask something and then the language model is going to say it's either protein, amino acid or vitamin. And then it's going to say, okay, I'm going to read every row and then whatever matches protein, for example, then I'm going to extract that row, all right? And then after I extract it, I will assign it to the following objects, okay? So image source, price and all that. Then all that's going to be packaged and returned as the following variable GS import. And I've put in a variable that allows you to extract a maximum number of products, okay? Because let's say you're trying to extract 120 
products, how are you going to show that as a carousel on VoiceFlow, right? So it's good to limit the number in, the, in this scenario. So I put three, okay? You could put five, six, depending on how many products you want to add on a carousel. But yeah, I want to make it a maximum of three, okay? So that's it. That's the first block. And then you have the second block where I'm going to define some other stuff, all right? And then we have this second JavaScript object, okay? So here we are going to do a couple of things. First of all, we're going to grab information from the handle object from before, okay? So basically the information that looks like this, okay? Clear vegan protein with the hyphen in between because this is part of the URL that you can click on in order to go to the website, okay? Where the product is located. So I'm going to get that and I'm going to add the following URL behind it, okay? This URL, this part of the URL is static, okay? It's not gonna change, but the part that comes after the forward slash will change. And the part that comes after is these handles, all right? So we're going to just assign a variable where we add this and then the handle after that, okay? And then between uh, other things as well, okay? We're going to remove um, some quotes, uh, some other information. We're just going to clean the information. And then we will assign all these variables for the first product, okay? Then for the second product and then for the third product. And then obviously, if you want to add more products, you add more of these. And then after that, we're going to check for a variable that contains the number of products, okay? So this would be product count right here, okay? It just gets the length of the, the, the products uh, list, okay? So that's that. So it's going to check if the variable product count is either one, two, or three, okay? If it's something other than one, two, or three, then we will capture it as an error, and then we will come here, okay? Because the current flow is not designed to handle more numbers as we have in the JavaScript code, okay? And then if the product count is one which means we have one product then we're only going to show a carousel with one item okay if there's two then two items if there's three then three items okay and that's basically it and then obviously once we come here we're going to assign the relevant variables all right and in the button where we click and access the product on the website we're going to add the product url okay and we have defined that already if you remember before by adding the static url from the shopify store and then adding the handle okay and that's pretty much it that's that's all there is to this. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please uh, give me a thumbs up and follow me so that I can post more videos like these. And if you didn't like the video, well, drop a comment down below and let me know why. And that's about it. See you in the next one.